Victoria's study was a large wooden room, hidden behind a wall inside the broom closet underneath the staircase, with only a single entrance. If there was one thing Priscilla could say for certain about her grandmother, it was that she knew how to keep things well hidden. The damask wallpaper interior of the study was dyed with a magnificent shade of green and dimly lit by the soft glow of a magical ivory light. Everywhere, tall bookshelves were filled to the brim with tomes both historical and magical in nature, detailing the vast history of Gangleton and what came before it. Old, dusty maps, photos, and newspaper clippings hung from every wall, most of them from or about places Priscilla had never seen, been to, or heard of before. How her grandmother had collected so much contraband, she didn't dare ask, for she knew the story could very well last longer than there were hours in the day. At the far end of the room, a tiny wardrobe concealed clothing, not anything like the Gangleton attire. From one curiosity to the next, her grandmother's desk was littered with magical and historical trinkets from times long ago, none of which Priscilla could understand or even begin to describe. Next to the door, an ancient calendar hung from the wall. On its circular face, a red rune glowed, marking today's date. Victoria chuckled lightly as Priscilla followed her to the finely set table where two intricately painted teacups awaited. Victoria, why is Gangleton so stodgy? I swear, one second off routine would have them flown all day. Victoria sighed heavily as she poured Priscilla a cup of hibiscus tea from a considerably impressive height. Oh, my dear, Gangleton wasn't always so dreary. It used to be genuine, innocent, joyful, she paused, as if contemplating whether or not she should say anything else at all. Just like Rue. Rue? Priscilla asked. Yes, Rue, the home of our ancestors. You mean we're not from here? That's not surprising. Priscilla let out a silent laugh. We don't really fit in, do we? This is true. Victoria replied. None of us fit in here. Well, go on. Priscilla found herself eagerly wanting to hear more, which was unlike her when Victoria usually prattled on about the olden days. It's time, Priscilla. It's time you know. Priscilla leaned closer. Time for what? The truth. Let me tell you the tale my mother told me, and would recite for all Gangleton as a reminder of our purpose. Victoria settled into her high-backed chair and wet her mouth with a sip of tea. Do you remember the tale of the dignitaries and their reasons for keeping Gangleton inside the force field? No, Priscilla frowned. Why do you keep giving me that look? Priscilla... You are my only grandchild, Victoria said solemnly, the only limb left to hold the cherry of our history. Now you're flying, Priscilla responded with a sarcastic wave of her hand. Victoria's eyes narrowed, and she groaned. If you weren't so unique, I would think what I'm about to tell you would be lost forever. Please, ready yourself for what I'm about to sound to you she said, suddenly very serious, as she smoothed her jacket and straightened in her chair to tell the tale of ancient times. Our ancestors came from the mystical land called Rue, a utopian jungle metropolis. Hidden beneath the shield of the guardian deities, it was a pristine and luscious jungle. Rainbow mists filled the valleys, where magnificent waterfalls kissed the rivers of pure crystal blue water. There thrived plants, flowers,
flowers, and birds of all colors and forms only one's imagination could conceive. And in the skies, islands floated, high above, with the most breathtaking views of the euphoria. Within the depths of this jungle, laced in vines, were the immaculate structures of Rue's civilization, as much a part of this place as if they had grown from the very soil, and our ancestors were not a sight to be overlooked either. They decorated themselves in luxurious, flowing silk gowns, adorned with golden jewelry and gemstones of all colors and styles, draping headpieces, pendants of pure essence, rings cut of the highest quality. She took a deep breath as she ran her hand down her own silk garment with a knowing smile. Were they like your gowns? Priscilla asked. Hardly. Theirs were much, much finer. She sipped her tea again and continued. Their delicately crafted instruments played harmoniously with the sounds of nature. The people danced and sang. They lived in a true euphoria. Priscilla sat entranced by her grandmother's tale, hanging on the edge of every word and barely sipping her tea. With each word, the passion built in Victoria's voice and surged through her lips. The old woman's eyes seemed to shimmer as the memories of their family's lineage were put into spoken word for Priscilla alone. For many a growth cycle, the Guardian's shield protected Rue from the evils of the outside world. It was the community's devotion to love, acting as many in body but one in mind, that provided the Guardians their strength. The evils eventually made one final attempt to annihilate Rue, but instead brought about their own demise. The dark times had finally come to an end, and as the golden dragons flew across the skies to release the shield, every one of our ancestors celebrated. The guardians believed it time for the people of Rue to once again recirculate into the world. A new growth cycle had begun, and the lifeless land was ready to live love once more. Wait, dragons? Priscilla could not help but interject. It was almost too fantastical to believe. As in, actual dragons. Victoria nodded. Dragons. And that is only the beginning. <laughs>